war has come again to the Seven Kingdoms. After escaping his imprisonment at the hands of Tywin Lannister, Stannis Baratheon immediately returns to Storm's End and calls his banners. He sends ravens to every major lord, detailing his evidence that Marcella is not the daughter of Robert, but of an unholy union between Jaime and Cersei Lannister. Ned Stark, swayed by Stannis' claims and the murder of his close friend Robert, rallies the North behind the rightful Baratheon king. His close ally, Hoster Tully, pledges the Riverlands to their cause. There is no response from the Vale, whose lords are tired of war, nor from Dorne. Mace Tyrell prevaricates, unwilling to commit to this sudden civil war. The Queen's regent, Tywin Lannister, senses an opportunity and arranges for a betrothal between Myrcella and Mace's son Stefan. At the chance of having a Tyrell one day sit on the Iron Throne, Mace agrees to the proposal, calling his banners for the Queen. The lines of war have been drawn as the Lion and the Stag prepare for battle. But then, amidst the chaos, a third contender arises. More ravens flood the Seven Kingdoms, these ones from Dorne. Rhaegar Targaryen's children are alive and under the stewardship of Doran Martell. He calls on all the lords of the realm to support their rightful king, Aegon Targaryen. Lord Baylor Hightower, swayed by Doran with a betrothal promise between his heir and Aegon's sister Rhaenys, rallies a coalition of aligned lords of the Reach to pledge themselves to the Targaryen cause. Meanwhile, Balon Greyjoy names himself as King of the Iron Islands and leads an invasion against the distracted North for land, women, and plunder. War has come, but an ambitious lord might find opportunities amidst the bloodshed. Hello Wanderers, welcome back to our Crusader Kings 3 roleplay series following Titus of House Peak. And as you will have seen in that intro, things are heating up in the Seven Kingdoms. Now that intro took a ridiculous amount of time to make, so if you have been enjoying the series thus far, please click the like button, and if you haven't subscribed to the channel already, make sure that you do because there will be more episodes like this upcoming. But now that that is out of the way, let us discuss the situation that we find ourselves in and go into a little bit more depth about the war the Seven Kingdoms is facing at the moment. So as you will remember in that last episode, Robert Baratheon was slain. He died under mysterious circumstances that happened sometime around the tournament of Longbow Hall, that very same tournament in which our character dueled one of the king's guards so eh, you know that probably doesn't look good when the king gets murdered uh, immediately after that but it is what it is and we can probably safely assume that uh tywin lannister had a hand uh behind that so uh after robert's death stannis baratheon took position as a regent uh, he, I believe, discovered evidence then of Marcella's parentage. I mean, obviously, it was already cast in doubt when Robert executed Cersei, uh, having discovered evidence of her relationship with Jamie Lannister. So Marcella's parentage was already called into question. Stannis was obviously going to do something about that until Tywin came in and arrested him. Now... Stannis was able to escape the prison, and that was where we left that last episode off. And I left it up to you in the comments to see whether we should kind of spur things into a fairly realistic and also very interesting scenario. And it seemed like everybody was pretty much in agreement. And so that is what we have done. So we have taken over as Stannis here, or we took over to set all this up. And we have initiated a rebellion for Stannis's claims on the Iron Throne because he is obviously the rightful Baratheon ruler. We know that, 
but obviously the supporters of Queen Marcella are going to be denying any terrible rumors that may be surrounding her. Uh, obviously, Lord Eddard Stark has joined Stannis's cause. This is probably the most justified of all the decisions that I've made in this scenario because Eddard Stark pretty much does this exact thing in the books when he discovers that uh, Cersei's children are not Robert's children, and then he plans to essentially put Stannis on the throne or put forward Stannis's claim uh, before he was uh, arrested and executed. So this is pretty well justified. The Riverlands have joined them, and I think this just makes a lot of sense. We know that the Riverlands are loyal uh, to House Stark, um, not in the sense of like seeing them as their overlords, but they're loyal to the alliance they have with House Stark. And so they have joined it. And Hoster Tully is, you know, also the type of man who, you know, if presented with good evidence of these claims, he would also recognize that Stannis is the rightful king. Uh, the alliance between the North and the Riverlands is actually a little more interesting than you might think, because I just noticed this. Edmure Tully is a Septon, which means he can't inherit titles. I don't know how this happened. I don't know if it was an event or if a uh, Hoster, you know, made Edmure take, you know, the position as a Septon. No idea how this happened, but that means that Edmure will not inherit, which means that Caitlyn... Or Catelyn, Caitlyn, is going to inherit the Riverlands, which means her son with Eddard Stark, Lord Brandon, is going to inherit both the North and the Riverlands. So the North and the Riverlands are going to be united in the next generation. So that's going to lead to some pretty interesting things, no doubt. Uh, the Vale has decided to stay out of the war. Uh, Lord Sarman here... Uh, who is John Arryn's uh, young son. His regent is Lady Alyssa of House Wainwood, the wife of Dennis the Darling. And I think it makes a lot of sense, and we kind of have some evidence of this in the books, uh, of the Vale not really wanting to get involved in wars right away. Now, part of that was Lysa Tully, but obviously the other Lords of the Vale went along with that at the time, so... I think it's pretty understandable that the Vale is staying out of it. We'll see if they end up signing with one or another. The AI can do that, I believe, um, depending on how some of the wars are going. Obviously, the Westerlands are supporting Queen Marcella here. Uh, Lord Tywin is the regent, and I suspect that he is going to be in a pretty strong regency here we can probably imagine that he is uh going to be looking to entrench himself in that regency as much as possible uh and that kind of that's the main parts of the side there or at least it was uh until tywin arranged that marriage between lord stefan here tywin, uh mace tyrell's son and Queen Marcella, and that's not a matrilineal marriage. So Stefan's children will be a, and Marcella's children will be Tyrells, meaning a Tyrell will sit the throne. Obviously, Ty Tywin Lannister doesn't care about forming a matrilineal betrayal because, as far as they're putting forward, Marcella is still a Baratheon, according to you know the propaganda. That they're putting forward. So Tywin has no, you know, need to keep the keep that lineage there. He just wants to retain power. So he's, you know, manipulating Marcella. Um, and he's gonna do that by getting this alliance with the Reach. You can see that the Reach is a little bit divided, and we're gonna go into that a little bit more uh after. But some of these Reach lords have decided to side with Stannis. Um and some of them have decided to align themselves with the Iron Throne. But then, as you will have seen in that intro, there is also a third contender. And that third contender is Dorne. And that is because Dorne is putting forth the claim of Aegon Targaryen. Yes, 
and some of you may remember this, Aegon and his sister Rhaenys were never killed in this timeline. In fact, Elia Martell, I believe she died. She succumbed to her inherent weakness. So she wasn't murdered in King's Landing. None of those particular events, the events of the the sacking of King's Landing, they didn't happen. Um, So Aegon and Rhaenys survived. They were in hiding. We now realize that they were in hiding with their uncle, Lord Paramount Doran, or Prince Doran of Doran. And now that Stannis and Queen Marcella are going up against each other, each one proclaiming themselves the rightful king or queen, Doran is coming forward and saying, neither of you are the rightful ruler of the Seven Kingdoms. It is, in fact, Aegon Targaryen, the son of Rhaegar. Now, this is obviously very fitting. He has arranged a betrothal between Aegon and his daughter, Princess Cedra, and he is putting forth that claim. Now, some of the lords that did not really um, band together under either the Lannister forces or Lord Stannis's forces have now taken this opportunity to join into this third faction, uh, the most prominent of which is House Hightower. Now, the factions that are joining the Targaryen cause here, you'll notice are typically ones that are traditional Targaryen loyalists, but that's not the biggest factor here. Uh, So let me explain when it comes to the Reach, because that's where we're still playing, as with uh, Lord Titus here. Uh, Let me explain a little bit of how I can see this going down. And I'm sure there'll be some disagreements, but I think this is pretty reasonable. Now, Lord Baylor here, which, you know, comes from a traditional Targaryen loyalist house. He was swayed by Doran's offer of a betrothal between his son, Niles Hightower, and Rhaenys Targaryen. So Niles will eventually be the husband of the sister of the king, if all goes well. That's a pretty tempting offer. Even if Baylor's sister is married to Mace Tyrell, but Mace Tyrell, you know, probably isn't necessarily looking all that honorable, considering uh, he is marrying his son to a girl whose you know parentage is called into question. But it makes sense from Mace's perspective. You know, I think we've seen enough of him to know that he could be swayed in such a way. But uh, Baylor Bright Smile is probably not looking at it the same way. He's a d- just and diligent man. And with that offer of this marriage, I think it's safe to say that he could probably be swayed by that. Now, Old Town being one of the most powerful or the second most powerful house in the Reach has a lot of sway and they have managed to convince some of their allies and related houses to the cause. So. The West West March has joined in. The West March has, uh, House Tarly has no lost love for House Tyrell, especially kind of a weak ruler like Lord Mace. Lord Allen here, he's just a kind of a tough badass, very much like his brother Randall. And so, and he has an alliance with Old Town here. So the, the West March, House Tarly, has joined in with Old Town. Uh, as has Golden Grove, because you'll see that Baylor is married to someone from House Rowan. So House Golden Grove has joined in there. I believe House Oakheart has sided with the Targaryens. Uh, a few of these lords over here, uh, Ashford and, and such, have also joined in. Then we've got like Tumbleton as Pledge for Stannis and uh, a few others there. So basically, our sides are three kind of sides here in this war. The, the forces of Queen Marcella are the Lannisters and the, the Westerlands and the, the lords who remain loyal to Mace Tyrell and the Reach. Then we've got Stannis with the Riverlands and the North. And then we have Dorne with many of the lords of the Reach. And then, of course, we have a few lords in the Crownlands here, such as House Valarion, obviously siding with the Targaryens, and House Hayford, I believe, Rook's Rest as well. 
So there we go. We have our our sides in that. And then as you will have seen, Balon Greyjoy here has formed his own kingdom and he is invading Flint's Finger in order to take lands from the north. So a lot of chaos, a lot of chaos in the realm. So hopefully I've set that up and hopefully you guys agree with my kind of assessment of where the chips may have fallen. I, there's a lot of different ways something like this could happen, but to me, this feels pretty justified. And honestly, I could imagine this as an alternate history to, to what happened in the books. So uh, it, it feels pretty fitting. Now let's take a look at our sides here. So uh, on the side of Stannis, you'll see that uh, he has about 75,000 troops versus Marcella's 60,000, but that is not including the forces of the Reach who have not been called in yet. There is that alliance. They're probably going to get called in right away. That's going to give Marcella another 18,000 troops on her side, probably putting her, yeah, a, a, basically about even with Stannis in this. So the sides are quite even here. So, and and that's what I was going for. I was trying to set things up in a way that made sense, but also where each faction wouldn't have a massive advantage over another. Then we can look at the war with Dorne here. And once again, that is going to be relatively even as well between Dorne here and Myrcella. So there's these three fairly even factions and they're all going to be fighting and it's probably going to go for a while because there's going to be a lot of a lot of troops involved. So the question is, what does Lord Titus Strongarm of Starpike do in this situation? And you guys can probably guess where I am leaning. And that is indeed due to the fact that we are also traditional Targaryen loyalists. And really think about it from this perspective, from the perspective of an ambitious man. He's not going to get much by siding with the status quo. Now, if he joins up with uh, Lord Paramount Mace in the Reach, yeah, he might be able to get his position uh, uh, as the Lord of the Pale March. Um, but really, the status quo is not going to be as helpful to, to somebody who is ambitious. He could alternatively join with Stannis, but Stannis is not necessarily somebody I think that Titus would be expecting that he could make a lot of gains with should Stannis become the king. I feel like that's also kind of a status quo choice, and there's not a lot of potential there for Titus. Perhaps the most potential is siding with the Targaryens and House Martell here, as that will essentially, you know, invalidate a lot of uh, Lord Paramount Mace Tyrell's power within the Reach, and that'll give a lot more power to the lords who have signed up with the Targaryen cause. So I think that that is where the most potential for power lies, and I think that's where Titus is leaning. Now, in order to uh, solidify this, we are going to, I uh, think, arrange for a marriage between our son, Urathon, and uh, the daughter of Baylor Brightsmile. And obviously, all of these lords who are joining up with the Targaryens, if any lord of the Reach becomes, you know, more, more powerful than the others, it's probably going to end up being House Hightower. So aligning ourselves fairly closely with them could be quite advantageous to us. And it seems as though we can't quite get this marriage unless we offer a, a grand wedding. And so I think we'll do that. We should be able to save up enough money for a very, very small grand wedding uh, in, what, 16 years time. So I think that that should be fine. Uh, we're going to arrange for that marriage because, yeah, getting that alliance with Old Town, aligning ourselves with the old, uh, with the High Tower faction is going to set us up pretty well. So we're going to let some time pass. The forces are going to be gathering up. I imagine Mace is probably going to get called in right away here. 
There we go. And the betrothal proposition has been accepted. So even though our Lord here has signed up with the with the Lannisters, we are going to, in fact, join the faction of the rebels here. We are going to join on the side of of Doran Martell and House Targaryen here. So doesn't look like the Okay, so let's take a look. Okay, here we can see the troops are basically even. Doesn't look like Mace has been called in yet to the other war, but I imagine he'll probably get called into both shortly. So we've got our alliance with uh, Old Town. Uh, we've got the West March with us. We have some still, I mean, our ties with House Tarly are, you know, lessened now with Randall's death, but we've got a good chunk of Reach Lords here who are on our side, and that's gonna be uh, pretty pretty good. We're gonna be going up against Mace Tyrell, who's gonna have troops right here, so we're probably gonna need to meet up with Old Town and House Tarly here. We'll see if we can defeat the forces that Mace Tyrell raises up right away before they can kind of meet up with the Lannisters and the, the armies of the Crownlands, but we shall see. And we'll try to keep an eye on everything going on here with Stannis and stuff as well, but we need to focus on our own things at first. So we are going to raise up our troops. We're gonna lead the forces ourselves because we wanna get as much honor as we can. Yeah, there we go. So looks like uh, Mace has been called into both wars. So that, yeah, look at that. I mean, we've got a slight advantage mostly because of our troops that we pledged to the cause, but in terms of troop numbers, they're, they're essentially even here. So no one side has really any kind of significant advantage over the other. Uh, we're gonna do our best to meet up with the forces of our allies here so we don't kind of get crushed by a big Tyrell army before we can meet up. So we're gonna try to meet up with uh, the forces of House Hightower here. We'll, we'll go and we'll siege down the province of Springkeep while they siege down uh, Adenly here, or Aldenly. And we'll see how things play out. We've got the forces of uh, Darkdell and House Oakheart here. Ashford's coming in. Looks like House Rowan has already gotten hit by the Tyrell army, which is unfortunate, but they may have given it enough of a distraction for the rest of our forces to gather up. So that's unfortunate for House Rowan, but uh, it's not the... Not the end of the world, just minus 3% war score there. We've got forces from Dorne coming in to join up with us. Not entirely sure where we'll see Doran Martell. Looks like his forces are taking to the sea. And then of course we've got Stannis. Stannis, uh, let's see. Not sure where he is, but obviously he's raising up our for his forces and the forces of the north and of uh, the Riverlands are going to be gathering up there as well. So, all right, we've got some pretty good armies here. I'm feeling relatively safe with the forces that we've got gathering up here. So we'll try to stick with the rest of the armies uh, of the Reach, and that should probably give us... Oh, why did you guys abandon that siege? Uh, well, I mean, that was their choice, I suppose. All right, looks like everybody's... Everybody's gathering here. We're just going to attach ourselves to the uh, first high tower army, so we don't really need to, uh, you know, manage our troops too much here. Looks like we've got Ashford and the forces of Hospital. Oh, looks like another Rowan army uh, pretty quickly formed up, and then the Tyrell forces. Oof, big, big, uh, big army here with House Tyrell and House Lannister's forces kind of gathering up. That might give an advantage to Stannis here, who's actually looks like he's got forces coming in here as well. So I'm curious where all of these fights are going to be, but it has come to my... Oh, we are swaying, swaying Baylor over to our side. Uh, I We can't afford to spend any money at the moment, though. 12,000 troops from House Rowan and House Ashford here. Not sure where they're going, but we are... Okay, so we got a siege down. That is good to see. 
and hopefully the AI is not going to be too dumb about their their troops here, but we'll have to keep an eye on it. Let's see, Stannis doesn't seem, doesn't look like any battles have been engaged uh, there just yet. We've got pretty good forces here. Yeah, about 40,000 troops in the area. Oh, and then Dorne is coming in here as well. And it looks like Tyrell and House Lannister are returning to the Crown Lands, probably to deal with the incoming forces of uh, the Riverlands, the North, and Lord Stannis here. So kind of abandoning the Reach to the various uh, forces here that are invading the Reach. But that is it advantageous to us. Oh, Maester Morn is no longer our Maester. Oh, he's uh, gone off to join. Oh, he's went back to the Iron Islands. Interesting. Maester Morn, I'm back to the Iron Islands. Curious to, to see what he gets up to there. But in any case, we'll need a new Maester. We should probably send for one from the Citadel here. So yeah, we're gonna, it looks like we're focusing on sieging down the Tyrell lands. Uh, the Dornish forces in the Reach as well, so. The maester I sent for from the Citadel has arrived. A Kraken man. Kraken man, eh? Where is, where are, oh, Cape Kraken. I see, I see. Uh, oh, but he's, he's quite good. Schemer, maester. Uh, he's not much of a, uh, a person to, like a healer or anything, so hopefully we won't get injured in any of these battles. So yeah, sieges going down. Oh yeah, looks look at this. We got a we got big forces over here. So it looks like our armies are gathering up in the reach to deal with Tyrell first, and then we'll see how the rest of it plays out. We've unlocked another intrigue thing. We're probably gonna go to Instructed Spies. I want to continue down this route. Still haven't played around with the spy mechanics too much yet. But in any case, we'll see. We'll see what happens here. Curious. I wonder if they're gonna get into some some battles over here. Enemy ally joins the war. Your acquaintance Mace has died. What? A person of interest to you, Lord Paramount Mace of the Reach, fell from the window of his bedchamber to his death. What? Who murdered Mace Tyrell? Hmm, could this possibly have been, you know, maybe Tywin Lannister or something? You know, he gets the alliance with Mace Tyrell, then he, then he, um, well, although Willis has joined the war for, oh, but Willis has joined against... Wait, no, who's he? No, is he still fighting against us? Yeah, he is. Okay. So I'm so I'm just putting this theory out there. I'm sure that and leave your own theories in the comments. But but here's my theory. Uh Tywin gets the alliance with Mace Tyrell. He gets all of his forces. He brings those for you know, they're they're gathering up their forces. Then the invasion of the Targaryen loyalists here in the Reach. Mace Tyrell is suggesting that he wants to take his Tyrell forces to go back and defend the Reach. And then he just so happens to get murdered or no, he, he dies in a suspicious way. And now the, the Reach forces are maybe put under or the Tyrell forces are put under somebody who's a little bit more uh, loyal to Tywin and, you know, under his influence and, you know, is able to manipulate hit them the way that he suspects maybe that's it maybe it was somebody on our side i honestly have no idea uh but i'm curious to see what your guys's theories are but in any case uh looks like willis here the new lord paramount is uh still going to go along with his father's plans here so yeah we've got some big armies in here and the sieges are going uh pretty well for now, looks like we're gonna get a couple of them done. Unfortunately, the the fort level of some of these places is insane. 36 fort level here, so. 
Uh, it'll take a long time to get any of these uh, sieges done here. And hopefully the AI is not too dumb about how it uh, arranges his forces here. Our daughter Ellen is growing strong. Oh, well, that's good to know. Oh, and we have another son. Uh, you know what? Let's name him uh, Dayrun Rickard Luther Raymond. Uh, you know what? Let's name him Carrick after our good friend Carrick here. Yeah, I think that that uh, I think that that's a a nice thing. We'll name him. We'll name him Carrick. So there we go. Let's. Yeah, I mean, we've got all our forces here. I'm feeling pretty safe, but I just have no idea how the war on Stannis's side is gonna go. I mean, they haven't engaged. Nobody's engaged in battle. They're like dead even in terms of troops. We've got that slight advantage, but it's not very much. So, yeah, this this could go any different way, really. Yeah, really, I'm really curious when this first battle is going to be engaged here. So, we'll keep an eye on things. It doesn't look like it's going to be around us. We've got all of these forces looking to kind of take the high towers and, or take the Tyrells, I should say, and really manage things uh, here in the the Reach. Hmm. Uh, unfortunately, none of these sieges are actually being helpful to us. It's not adding to our war score. We're going to need to go and deal with our enemies a little bit more directly here. Looks like some sieges are going on behalf of... Uh, the Lannister forces here, but yeah, let's uh, let's just kind of keep an eye on things and see how everything plays out. We're gonna speed up time a little bit. We'll pause for events and things like that. There we go. So we got some good sieges done. All right, now our troops are on the move. That's what I like to see. Where are we gonna be going? Hopefully, we're gonna be looking to engage in some battles. That would be that would be ideal here. Uh, let's see. My skilled vassal. Master Allen has proven himself highly capable. There are some projects I would like to undertake in the Lordship of Dunstanbury. I think I should handle such delicate matters. Yeah, we're going to do it ourselves. Yeah, so I'm hoping that we're going to head over here and try to seek out some of the Lannister forces. Unfortunately, we're, you know, falling pretty deeply into debt because we've got our forces raised up like this, but there's not really that much we can can do there about that. So we're going to be in debt. Okay, AI, be, be a little smarter and uh, actually go after your enemies for once. Hmm, our sun has become pensive. Interesting. We'll probably give him the stewardship education, I imagine. Uh, probably, it seems most fitting, and we're probably going to need, uh, you know, a good stewardship leader after all of this. Oh my gosh, okay. Actually, <laughs> go go and face your enemies. Uh, if, the, if the enemy, or if our allies do not seem to be managing themselves very well, I might have to go in and uh, do a little bit myself, but... We are not going to be spending any extra money that we do not have. Ooh, looks like uh, various lords and stuff are are dying uh, in these in these fights here. Oh, okay, here we go. Some battles, some battles have definitely happened here, and looks like Stannis came out on top. Uh, yeah, okay, so Stannis has has managed to come out on top here, which is. Uh, I guess concerning. I'm not sure which side would be either easier to fight, but if they just weaken each other, that's going to be all the better for us anyways. So, yeah, unfortunately, it's uh, I'm not I'm not a big fan of how far in debt we are. I'm actually wanting to... I'm going to break chains with the, the forces that we have now, and I'm going to resupply here in Dunstanbury. So... Uh, I wonder if we'll be able to. Probably not. Let's head back to the Starpike here. 
and we're gonna we're gonna replenish our troops and uh, supplies. Darn, we might have to split our troops in half. Taking some attrition, that's fine. We should get our troops up. Yeah, our allies just oh, they don't seem to know what to do. It might get a little bit easier once the once things here with Stannis's war. Oh, okay. Things are things are coming back. Looks like they're going uh, kind of back and forth here. Uh, let's see. You know what? I'm tempted to. Uh, yeah, let's just try to get our our supplies back up. Then we'll we'll do some sieges. We might be able to get some money by sieging down some of the the enemy here. So that's probably what we're gonna try to do. I think we'll head over here and we'll bring in these troops and we're just gonna go and do some do some sieging down. See if we can get some money back from those sieges. It's probably our best bet here. So our allies just don't seem to know what they're they're doing, unfortunately, the AI, not always the smartest. Looks like the things here with, you know, Stannis's forces and Mercy. Oh, actually, looks like she just took a huge hit there. That's not going to be good for, for her, that's for sure. Uh, we got that siege done there. Hopefully, uh, do we have any? We getting some prisoners here we can ransom? Uh yeah, you'll you'll pay a ransom. You'll pay a ransom. Yeah, we need to get to uh, get as many lords ransomed in, essentially as we can. Our daughter here, I'm going to give her the trait temperate. So yeah, we'll we'll kind of focus on sieges. Oh, what happened to Alan Tarley? Disappeared without a trace. <laughs> Interesting. Things uh, things are going pretty crazy here in this war, but yeah, I mean, the forces are kind of going up and down, so this war could go on for a long time. I mean, it's already been two years. I, wow, time really flies uh, when you turn on the fast speed <laughs> in the Game of Thrones mod. Uh, but yeah, I mean, it's two uh, two years of war already, and things are still definitely undetermined. I mean, Stannis has the advantage. He's won a few good fights in this war, but he's maxed out on battles. He's going to need to do some sieges. He does not hold the, the war target here. And marcella has got... Uh, she's got that advantage on us because we have not engaged in, in any battles, and she still holds that war target. If we can get, if we can get our allies to go for King's Landing then maybe maybe we'll have a shot. I might have to go and uh, take control of our allies here. Oh, there, look at that. Look at that. There are some Lannister forces coming in here right away. So this is where we're going to end the episode. I am going to just kind of make sure that the AI is not being complete idiots with the way that they're managing their troops here. But that will all play out in the next episode. So until then, thank you for watching.